All right, guys, we're going to try to roll through these last two players we have for you today. These are kind of guys. How much do they have left in the tank? I'll start with Leonard Fournette. He was a running back 11 this last year. Uh, he'll be 28 going into next year. Um, like what we said with James Cotter, Aaron Jones, I think a lot of people will be surprised to see that Leonard Fournette was the running back 11 last year somehow. Uh, he just kind of scraped his way there <laughs> off volume. Uh, he could be cut for less than a five mil dead cap, but I, I think he probably stays um, with that team for one more year. And if he doesn't, he'll go somewhere where he will have some kind of a role, even a split backfield. Uh, certainly if he stays in Tampa Bay, the trends towards the end of the year were, were more split between him and Rashad, which is why we have Rashad ranked a lot higher. Um, if he stays in Tampa Bay, you know, the receiving work we've seen from him could be, cut into that's kind of what's always given Len Fournette that floor that's how we sneak snook into the top 12 yet again it's just a lot of dump off zero yard targets from a Tom Brady and we don't know if Tom Brady is going to be there uh, there's videos of Tom looking at schools in Miami there's talks of him <laughs> being the face of Vegas there's talks of there's talks all over who knows what the heck Tom Brady's gonna do maybe he retires but without him there who knows what that, that looks like or those little free dump offs for Leonard Fournette. Uh, I think he's down this this far. It's probably worth a stab. I mean, if you're talking early third, I think there's people just looking to sell Fournette for anything. Sure, I'll bring him on. But other than that, I'm not looking to acquire this guy in any type of a package. I'm not targeting Leonard Fournette. When we said that early third, that's it's basically free. You're taking a 10 to 20% dart throw in that range anyway. Um, Leonard Fournette, uh, this is a one-year rental at best. You know, we said age 28. Will his splits continue to decrease even if he stays in Tampa with Rashad? Kind of like a Zeke Pollard situation. Who knows? A lot of question marks. Uh, who? Yeah, Leonard Fournette's just not a, really a, a player that is too exciting for dynasty fantasy football anymore. He could he could go to worth next to nothing at any point. Um, somebody's going to give you a mid second for Leonard Fournette. I'm taking it and running away with it. I'm going to re-roll into this this upcoming draft class, uh, but. Nothing too exciting for Leonard Fournette. Nate, you have anything else to add there for Lenny? Yeah, I think you really should be trying to look across and and see if there is something you can get into. Like, uh, for example, if someone is really out on Brandon Cooks, uh, that'd be a player that I'd be willing to move Fournette uh, to get into. Just try to move across positions and try to you know, <laughs> reset the opposing manager's brain in that way. Uh, if you could turn Leonard Fournette into one of these random tight ends with some kind of upside, like even like a Dawson Knox, uh, Juwan Johnson even, I'd be willing to do something like that. Just take a shot somewhere, right? Um, find somebody who's actually got some upside. Like you're saying, if if it's a, like for me, it's probably like a, um, maybe like a mid third that I'd be like, okay, I guess I could take on Fournette for that and just see, you know, if Tom's back, um, for one more round, then yeah, maybe Fournette gets his 60, 70 receptions again, and he's an RB2 for me next year. So maybe for, uh, you yeah, know, that third, third round draft price, uh, I'm probably okay with, with having Fournette for one more year and just hoping that it works out. Um, but again, we talk about it all the time. These RB2s, um, obviously this past year he snuck in as a back-end RB1, but generally uh, as an RB2, the kind of profile that you view this player as, these guys are a dime a dozen when it comes into the season. You can you can find them in season quite easily, and it's not someone that you need to be prioritizing this off season. that's for sure. Absolutely. And we were talking Zeke Pollard. We'll roll right into the last game, Nate. Yeah, so Ezekiel Elliott, also 28 years old, likely under contract for another season here, likely cut after, uh, for 2024, though. Uh, maybe a restructure in the works here, too, so keep an eye out for that. Obviously, you have Tony Pollard there, but Tony Pollard heading into free agency, as you heard on our last episode. Malik Davis, the only other running back on that roster. The Dallas Cowboys do have uh, full complement of picks, first, second, third, fourth, three-fifths, uh, sixth, and a seventh. Uh, it, I think, uh, Skyler, you're right on to think that they might be 
looking to grab another running back here. Obviously, it depends what they're doing with Pollard. Uh, if they do bring Pollard back, then they might look to target just another late-round guy just to have another name in the stable. Uh, if they let Pollard go, then I think they'd be much more aggressive in uh, in the draft. And it is kind of a Jerry Jones kind of pick, right? A, a flashy player at a at an offensive position. Uh, you saw them do this with CD lamb when a lot of people think they didn't need to with Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup in town. Um, they're not afraid to make a big splash. Uh, if they think there's a player there that, uh, will shine well under the lights that are the Dallas Cowboys. So there's a lot of ways that this could go still. I think as long as it's a Zeke Pollard kind of split, uh, I think you'd, and most likely anticipate what we saw towards the end of last year uh, and in the playoffs even. Um, I think Zeke is going to get some run once again. There, he's, he's kind of like a legacy player for them at this point, right? Like until the wheels totally fall off, he's going to get some play. Um, and he's still, you know, he's going to fall into the end zone a bunch of times. Uh, they still have a good offense there. I don't expect that to change going into next year. So I do think he's going to float around, you know, your RB2-3 flex kind of consideration week to week into next year. Um, that's the most likely scenario for him. But obviously at 28 years old, another guy, you're just thinking about what can he give me for next year? Anything beyond that is absolutely gravy. I'm not expecting anything beyond one year. So he falls into kind of the same category we're talking about with Fournette, right? Where, um, you know, if there is a situation where you think he can get out and there's somebody who at least has some upside uh, that you want to take a shot on, someone who might have a chance to appreciate in value, then definitely I'm interested in that. If you're a contending team and, you know, someone comes to you and says, hey, uh, give me a third for Zeke, and, you know, you get an extra flex consideration week to week for next year, you know, that's a good use of a third in my opinion too. So it could go both ways depending on what your team's looking like for next year. Um, that's where I'm at with Zeke. How about you, Skyler? Yeah, it's just funny talking Zeke right after Fournette when the last video we were talking Rashad right after Tony Pollard. The parallels between these two players, uh, mm -hmm. it's on it, it it's really interesting, honestly. Both these guys were top five draft picks in their respective classes, which is interesting and kind of humorous to look back, just seeing where they're at now in their careers, uh, kind of the tail end here. Yeah, Zeke Alley, he's just very, very limited. Um, you're hoping he falls into the end zone. I mean, his touchdown right at the end of the year was ridiculous. Uh, he kind of yeah. found his niche as this short yardage back touchdown goal line expert which is crazy when you just look at how much money this guy's made what they signed him to be back when he signed that extension um yeah everything we said with Leonard Fournette recycled here for Ezekiel Elliott as far as what I'm willing to buy in on he's not a guy I'm looking to target but if you can toss him in for nothing sure maybe he fills that RB2 three flex week to week matchup kind of guy um but nothing too crazy as you mentioned, yeah, with Jerry, it does feel like a Jerry pick. I would love to see the drama if Philadelphia and Dallas has another another one of these things where they're like <laughs> Nate and I in the startup trying to trade up to snipe each other in the in, <laughs> in these drafts. If one of them looks to, you know, Bijan kind of falls to the, the late first or maybe a Jameer Gibbs is still there kind of in the middle of the second. Maybe one of these two organizations take a stab and try to one up each other, make that flashy signing. But Ezekiel, he does. He offers very little to your fantasy team at this point. That's why he's all the way back here at run, running back thirty six. Um, before we close out here, I just want to give a quick little shout out to God. The next couple names people might be like, "Well, where were they?" Uh, Antonio Gibson, Elijah Mitchell, Devin Singletary, Jamal Williams. Those are probably close out our forty pre rookies. Uh, everything past that, really, dude. It depends what how this draft goes. Where free agency lands everyone else is kind of question marks the thing that separates 90 percent of running backs in the nfl and they always love the brain so it's just opportunity so everyone beyond running back 40 just kind of comes into what opportunity we're getting you could have somebody like a deontay foreman who falls in a run heavy team kind of a clear back and he have he offers a lot more value to your winning roster than he actually does in market even though he's beyond 40 he was much more valuable in your lineup this last year and certain periods of the season so um yeah ag and mitchell 
kind of their value spike is contingent on Brian Robinson, Christian McCaffrey health. Uh, both those guys are contracts through 2023. So nothing's really going to change for them unless there is an injury. If someone gets hurt, they're going to be worth obviously a lot more. Maybe extra time to either use them or sell them. Uh, Singletary and Jamal Williams are just committee backs. Uh, they're going to be first, second down uh, kind of grinders. Singletary could call, could fall more into uh, a, first down row where Jamal's that like strictly what we were saying with Zeke, that short yard, this guy, that touchdown expert, um, mm -hmm. both are free agents. They could more than likely go back to their teams. Uh, of, of course that could always change their low floor, low ceiling guys. Um, they'll see roles at their respective clubs, wherever they land. Um, but as we said, not much upside. So that closes out our top 36. So I guess you could say top 40 kind of running backs here.